What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another character spotlight. This time, Anti-Venom. Starts with an A, right? So, uh, for those who don't know Anti-Venom's origin, uh, really interesting compared to the rest of the symbiotes. He is technically a symbiote in the same way, like, you know, Carnage and Toxin and Venom are all Clintar race symbiotes, uh, but not in the same way. So the formation of Anti-Venom occurred when Brett, Eddie Brock, who was diagnosed with cancer, uh, went through an experimental treatment with Negative, Mr. Negative or Martin Lee. Uh, you might know him from the Spider-Man game for PS4. And basically created from the leftover residual symbiote inside Eddie Brock's body and the white blood cells, uh, a new being. Now, unlike the other symbiotes, he's not a sentient being. Uh, he doesn't have thoughts and brain power of his own. He's more of a tool type of symbiote that uh, works almost exclusively with Eddie Brock. There are some issues where he goes around and does other things, but he's basically an anti-symbiote. Uh, so he has almost all of the strengths of the normal symbiotes. He can clearly turn his body into different types of weapons. He has the memory of all of the things that the previous symbiotes had, like Venom and Carnage. He knows what they can do. Whatever they can do, he can emulate because of the genetic memory of a symbiote. Uh, he has none of the weaknesses, though. He's not a, He's immune to fire. He's immune to sonic blasts. Uh, cold doesn't affect him nearly as much as it affects some of the other symbiotes. Uh, and it's because the majority of his power, while he does have the, the symbiote appeal, like the protective layer and the, the indestructive nature and the ability to kind of manipulate matter and turn how he appears in different ways, uh, he also has a unique quality that allows him to basically heal uh, He's as he's basically made of white blood cells or mutated white blood cells. Almost anything. Uh, radiation parasites, sickness. Uh, he's basically a panacea or a cure-all for everything. Uh, and one of the more fun comic storylines, uh, he recognizes that Spider-Man's blood is irradiated and he tries to heal Spider-Man. Uh, and Spider-Man really quickly figures out, hey, if you do this, I'm not going to be a superhero anymore. An anti-venom symbiote is not smart, has no sentience. It's like, must heal, problem. Uh, so it's kind of stupid uh, as a being, doesn't have any brain. But uh, when it's bonded with Eddie Brock, and this is kind of the turning point for Eddie Brock in the storyline too. Uh, bad guy for most of his life, or at least anti-hero kind of status. Moved on, got diagnosed with cancer, started seeking redemption, found redemption, ended up with the anti-venom symbiote, started to become a hero. And that actually led into the most recent Donny Cates Venom run, if you're interested in that too. Uh, to get this more heroic Venom, who still likes to eat brains, but mostly bad guy brains. Anyway. That's enough backstory for Anti-Venom. Let's talk about the character real quick. Just going through, you'll notice I have Tier 4s and everything on him. Uh, a lot of that is unnecessary. I did it because at the time, I didn't have as strong an Anti-Venom as I would like. So to make up the difference in power on stars and red stars, I just invested a little bit more into his abilities. He's great in a lot of game modes. We'll get into that in a second. Wretched Healer is absolutely phenomenal on turn. Clear and negative effect from self. If that ally, or the most injured ally that has negative effect, could be self. If that ally is a symbiote, clear one negative effect from all other symbiote allies with a negative effect. Great on the symbiote team. Even if it's not on the symbiote team, it's okay. And then gain regeneration. Whenever this character drops with 50% health, gain evade. That's kind of the entire value of his tier 4. Uh, moving to Deadly Cure. A lot of people thought this was one of the best and most powerful abilities. Um, didn't really make too much of a difference. Uh, spread all positive effects on self to all symbiote allies versus, I believe it was just two before. Eh. It's a, you know, seven energy attack. It takes a while to get there. That is not inherently worth the tier four, but at the time I needed him to do a little bit more damage and check it. Uh, in retrospect, most of the time when he's transferring, he doesn't have that many buffs on him anyway, but it does make sure he's not just spreading the regeneration stacks he gives himself so it gets a little bit more value on the full symbiote team not the best tier four in the world but definitely a good one uh moving to antiseptic this one gets a little bit more valuable revive a dead symbiote ally with 60 percent base health 
instead of 30%. Just a slight increase and a slight amount of uh, healing to, you know, all of the allied character who goes from 15 to 20. Decent tier 4. Uh, one of the coolest things about this is if there's no symbiote ally to revive, he gains 3 energy, so it's actually a self-battery. Uh, kind of only costs 3 energy at that point, but on the off chance you need to res somebody, it's a pretty reasonable update. Uh, tier 4 is okay. And the basic tier 4 is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the Apply the opposite of two random positive effects he has. Since he's going to be stacking positive effects, giving a chance at negatives is huge. Um, apply damage to primary target and a little bit extra healing. This is a great upgrade, especially because the symbiotes do take a lot of turns with their turn meter and everything. So it's a pretty decent pool. I think like Wretched Healer, Antiseptic, and Death Claw are the best options. Deadly Cure is really good in the symbiotes eventually. None of these are regrets, just not high in priority. Uh, as for ISOs, it gets a little bit weirder with him. Striker is the best because of how his basic works, but it also adds like 30 seconds to his animation time. Not that much, but still. So a lot of times you find that getting away with uh, a Skirmisher is incredibly huge. And if you're not using a full Symbiote team, even Healer can be a huge difference because of how his character works off, how decent health pool he has, and how many turns he does take on his own. He's pretty reasonable. Raider, not so much. Fortifier, not so much. But Striker is kind of the go-to on the Symbiotes. You can get a little bit of value out of either of these two if you're noticing that the Symbiotes are taking too long to do stuff. Um, and realistically, the only benefit to Striker is that his assist, or Striker ISO 8 bonus attack, transfers all of the negative effects he has instead of just the two that are based from the basic. So you get a lot of extra value. You can put, like, you know, uh, immunities and, and a whole bunch of extra debuffs on people just in case, you know, uh, blinds, etc., etc. So reasonable stat, reasonable stat pool, all in all. And now, obviously, I have a pretty decent investment in mind, but he's so good in so many game modes that as a standalone character, it's worth the investment. Uh, moving to that, we can think about it from a perspective of the game modes. War... I'm not going to say great on offense and defense because they have very specific things they're good at. For example, you use the symbiotes whenever there's a summoned meta, like a Hella with Gregs or basically anyone who's going to summon. The symbiotes do a great job of, of taking extra turns and doing more work, and he's a part of that team. As an individual character, not as impactful in war offense and defense, but as a team, they're pretty good. You know, I, not bad. Uh, going to Arena... In the earlier stages of the game, an early anti-venom is a big deal if you're building out a symbiote team, but kind of falls off a little bit later, and he doesn't have any standalone value, so not much going on in Arena. Uh, raids, without question, almost every raid, if you can use him or any symbiote, you use them. In the Doom raids, the symbiotes are losing a little bit of value now, um, and you'll tell by this video in the future what the Doom raids were like. But still a reasonable option for them. So as far as raids, he's a great character. Uh, and then Dark Dimension, kind of don't leave home without him. As far as the city nodes are concerned, the symbiotes are the brass stacks. They're the gold standard. You want to make sure you get them all out. So taking in all those into account, he's not quite an S-tier character. He's not quite one of the best characters in the game. Uh, but he's definitely nowhere near as bad as some of the other characters we've reviewed so far, or situational anyway. So he's like an A-tier character. He's one of those characters where the second you get him, don't worry about your investment, you'll find value for them. Obviously, as time goes on, that value might go down, but what are you going to do? You, if you could only ever work on the top 40 characters in the game, you'd obviously be in a better situation than most people. But that that's not how the game works, so... When you get Anti-Venom, don't feel bad about your investment in him. He takes a lot of decent gear, but he's a great part of the character. And more importantly, uh, as a member of his team, he's absolutely phenomenal as just a the next investment character. So if you get Symbiote Spider-Man and him, the other characters don't require the same amount of investment because he can help them uh, do what you need him to do while you're working the rest of them up. So he's definitely like the second most important character on the Symbiotes. Anyway, that's pretty much it. As you know, I'm going to put the description uh, of information and in some comic series. Uh, I believe his initial introduction was Amazing Spider-Man 569. Yes, because it wasn't 469, and I thought that wasn't as fun as it could have been. Um, 569. So I'll put the link there so you can check that out. But a uh, really cool overall character. And uh, let me know how Anti-Venom works for you now in the comment section. Let me know if you're using him 
you know, if you've beaten DD4 already, where are you using him outside of a couple of raids here or there or anything like that? Because I think he's got a lot of potential as a character, and uh, it's just really hard to focus on characters that are like nine or ten months old. You know, longer, obviously, uh, when new characters come out all the time. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.